Welcome to Gospel Truth with Andrew Womack, celebrating 50 years of sharing God's unconditional love and grace. And now, Andrew continues teaching from the life-changing Word of God about grace, the power of the gospel. Welcome to our Thursday's broadcast of the Gospel Truth. Today, I'm continuing to teach through the book of Romans, and I tell you, this is just powerful. Paul is talking about the gospel, the nearly too good to be true news that God loves you and there's nothing you can do about it. God loves you not because you're lovely, but because He is love. God is not in a bad mood. God's not angry at you. God loves you. Man, this is nearly too good to be true news, but this is what releases the power of God. Another verse that goes along with this, Paul also said this in Galatians chapter 5, verse 6, that faith works by love. Once you understand that God loves you and there's nothing you can do about it, there's nothing you can do to make Him love you more, there's nothing you can do to make Him love you less, God is love, and He has commended His love towards you through Christ Jesus. Once you understand that, faith just works supernaturally. And you can turn it around this other way and say it this way, that if your faith isn't working, if you know that God is real, if you know that He has power, if you know that He can do things, but you just don't believe that it's going to work for you. It's because you don't understand how much He loves you. And this is what the gospel, the nearly too good to be true news that God makes everything available to you on an unearned, undeserved basis, that just causes the love of God to flow in your life and then it will cause faith to rise because faith works by love. This is what I've been talking about this week. If you've missed my first three days of teaching as we're going through the book of Romans, I encourage you to please get this book. Man, this is powerful. This will just change your life. I've also got the teaching on CDs and DVDs, and then we have a workbook that is designed specifically for you to study as a group. And it actually has a CD-ROM in there where you can print out the questions and you read these statements, you, you ask questions, you discuss it, and then you read what the Scriptures have as an answer. It's really a great way to go through this. But if you've missed any of this teaching, please get the materials because, man, this is important that you get it. So I've spent the first three days of this week talking primarily about Romans 1, 16, and 17. These are just foundational, true Scriptures that, man, every one of us, ought to, this ought to be your bread and butter. I mean, this ought to be what makes you tick is understanding that the gospel is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believes, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For therein, in the gospel, is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith as it is written, the just shall live by faith. And then in the next three verses, the Apostle Paul begins to start talking about the wrath of God already being revealed to people. Now, what is the connection here? And here's what I believe is happening. Paul said, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, verse 16. And he made these radical statements that were very offensive to the legalistic Jews of his day. They are likewise offensive to the legalistic performance-based Christians of our day who believe that you have to earn the blessing of God in your life. And so what he begins to say, he says, here's the reason that you don't need to tell people about how much of a sinner they are and condemn them and show them how ungodly they are. It's because in verse 18, he says, the wrath of God is revealed from heaven. And if you were to study this out in the Greek, I'm not going to take time to do all of that, but you know, in the Greek, the words, they had a, a perfect tense, a past tense, a future tense, all of these kind of things. It's much more detailed than our English language. But in the Greek, it literally is saying the wrath of God has already been revealed from heaven. In other words, he's saying, the reason I'm telling people the good news about how God loves them instead of condemning people and telling people how bad they are is because they already know that they're bad. The wrath of God has already been revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. Now, did you know that our modern-day people today, they would say, no, that's not true. There's, I just don't know right from wrong. 
And I believe that being a homosexual is fine, that I was born this way. I believe that committing adultery is fine. I believe that lying and stealing, telling little white lies, I have no conviction about this at all. People will say those kind of things today, but that's a lie. This is saying that the wrath of God has already been revealed from heaven against all ungodliness. Notice it says all ungodliness, not some of it, not just the big ten, the Ten Commandments, but all ungodliness and unrighteousness of man who hold the truth in unrighteousness. And look at verse 19, because that which may be known of God is manifest in them, not just to them, but in them. This is saying that there is an intuitive knowledge on the inside of every person of right and wrong. Now, you'll have people deny that and say, oh, no, I have no conviction. Well, the, this chapter goes on and shows that you can harden yourself towards it and you can become what the Bible down here calls reprobate. I'm going to talk about that in just a minute. But nobody starts that way. Everybody started with an intuitive knowledge of right and wrong, of God, of His existence, and of His wrath against their sin. So this is what Paul is saying. I don't have to tell people how ungodly they are. They already know it. On a heart level, they know it. Now, you'll have people say, no, that's not true. Yes, it is true. I believe the Bible more than I believe what people have to say. And it goes on to say in the next verse, it says, For the invisible things of Him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even His eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. These three verses are basically saying that regardless of what anybody claims, there is an intuitive knowledge of right and wrong, of God, of His existence, even of His Godhead. This is talking about the Trinity. Did you know when I was in Vietnam, outside of my main headquarters, there were three temples that were at least three stories. They might have been five stories tall. And they were built right next to each other. Three separate temples, but they were all built together. They were so close together. I never walked out to them, but it looked like, you know, that you could barely squeeze a person in between these three temples. I mean, they were right next to each other. They were old. And I inquired about them and found out that they were over 500 years. They were built 500 years before Christianity reached Vietnam. So this wasn't influenced from the Christian faith of a trinity, and yet they were three separate temples built right next to each other who worshiped one God who manifested himself in three parts. Now, I don't know anything about what this religion was, and I don't know if it was a true uh, worship of God. I doubt it. It was probably some form of perversion, but it does reflect that even before Christianity came with the doctrine of the trinity, they had a knowledge of a God who manifested Himself in three parts. And, you know, I went to um, Mexico and I went to Chichen Itza. And this is an old uh, uh, place, you know, that uh, uh, Azte or it wasn't the Aztecs. I just went blank on who that was. But anyway, it was, uh, it was the old people that lived there. And this is a uh, city that they've unearthed and it has a pyramid there and all these kind of things. And anyway, they, uh, we had a tour guide giving us a deal and they showed us uh, some of these, um, you know, carvings that were representative of their God. And he showed us that there was a trinity that they believed that this one God manifested himself in three parts. Now, I know that this group of people uh, were not truly worshiping God because they also were having human sacrifices there and things like that that are totally contrary. But anyway, my point is, even if it was a perversion, it shows that long before the Christian religion and the Trinity ever reached these places, they had a knowledge of the Trinity, the Godhead. And this is what this says, that God has revealed Himself in them to all of these things so that they are clearly seen is what it says in verse 20. Not vaguely seen, they're clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even His eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. In other words, Paul was talking about the good news, the gospel, and I know that the religious people were going to criticize him and no, you got to show people they're a sinner. You got to show people how bad they are. And he says, no, they already know it. 
THERE IS AN INTUITIVE KNOWLEDGE ON THE INSIDE OF EVERY PERSON. YOU KNOW, THIS IS THE ANSWER TO THE PEOPLE WHO SAY, BUT WHAT ABOUT THE PEOPLE THAT HAVE NEVER HEARD THE TRUE GOSPEL? WHAT'S GOING TO HAPPEN TO THEM? GOD WILL JUDGE THEM ACCORDING TO THE KNOWLEDGE THAT THEY HAVE. AND THESE VERSES SHOW THAT INSIDE OF EVERY PERSON, EVERY PERSON, WHETHER THEY'VE HEARD THE GOSPEL OR NOT, INSIDE OF EVERY PERSON, THERE IS A KNOWLEDGE THAT THERE IS ONLY ONE GOD AND THEY ARE NOT HIM. NOW, YOU CAN PERVERT THAT AND YOU CAN GET INTO MULTIPLE GODS, POLYTHEISM, YOU CAN GET INTO WORSHIPPING IDOLS, YOU CAN DO ALL KINDS OF THINGS, BUT AT ONE TIME, EVERY PERSON KNEW THE TRUTH. AT ONE TIME, EVERY PERSON KNEW THAT THERE WAS A GOD. YOU'LL HAVE PEOPLE WHO CLAIM TO BE ATHEIST, BUT THE TRUTH IS, THEY AREN'T ATHEIST. YOU KNOW, I LEARNED THIS WHEN I WAS IN VIETNAM. I WAS CONDUCTING BIBLE STUDIES AND I HAD PEOPLE MOCK ME AND MAKE FUN OF ME AND SAY THERE WAS NO GOD AND THEY WOULD JUST RIDICULE ME. AND and FROM THE OUTSIDE, IT LOOKED LIKE THAT THEY WERE REALLY SINCERE, THAT THEY DID NOT BELIEVE THAT THERE WAS A GOD. THEY LIVED LIKE THEY DIDN'T BELIEVE THAT THERE WAS A GOD. BUT GUESS WHAT? WHEN THE BOMBS GOT TO DROP AND WHEN THE BULLETS WERE FLYING, ALL OF THESE ATHEISTS WERE PRAYING AND CRYING OUT TO GOD AT THE TOP OF THEIR LUNGS. IT'S A MIND GAME. YOU STICK A GUN TO AN ATHEIST HEAD AND SAY, I'M GOING TO KILL YOU, AND THEY'LL SAY, OH, GOD. THEY'LL CRY OUT FOR HELP. IN THEIR HEART, THEY KNOW THAT THERE'S A GOD. YOU KNOW, I ACTUALLY HAD A MAN WORK FOR ME WHO WAS RAISED IN A HOME WHERE HIS PARENTS WERE ATHEIST. AND he, WHEN I FIRST TAUGHT THIS, HE SAYS, YOU KNOW, THAT'S NOT TRUE. I DIDN'T BELIEVE THAT THERE WAS A GOD. I HAD NO CONCEPT OF THERE BEING A GOD UNTIL HE WAS LIKE IN HIS 20s OR SOMETHING, AND THEN HE GOT BORN AGAIN. AND I SAID, LOOK, I I SAID, I DON'T MEAN TO CRITICIZE YOU, BUT I BELIEVE THE WORD MORE THAN I BELIEVE YOU. I SAID, AT ONE TIME, YOU KNEW THERE WAS A GOD. GOD REVEALED HIMSELF TO YOU. AND I SAID, YOU MAY HAVE REJECTED IT BECAUSE OF THE INFLUENCES AROUND YOU, BUT I SAID, IN YOUR HEART, YOU KNEW THERE WAS A GOD. SO HE WAS PRAYING ABOUT THIS AND SAYING, GOD, I, YOU KNOW, I DON'T WANT TO DISAGREE WITH ANDREW AND WHAT THE SCRIPTURES SAY, BUT I DIDN'T EVER BELIEVE THERE WAS A GOD. AND THE LORD JUST TOOK HIM BACK. HE WAS RAISED IN L.A. AND HE ONE TIME CLIMBED UP ON A HILL OVERLOOKING LOS ANGELES, AND HE JUST SAT THERE AND HE WAS WATCHING THE SUN SET. AND AS THE SUN SET, ALL OF A SUDDEN THESE LIGHTS BEGIN TO COME ON ALL ACROSS LOS ANGELES. MILLIONS AND MILLIONS OF LIGHT. AND HE WAS JUST LOOKING AT THIS AND THINKING ABOUT, THIS IS AMAZING BECAUSE EVERY ONE OF THOSE LIGHTS HAD TO BE PUT THERE BY SOMEONE. THEY DIDN'T JUST HAPPEN. AND HE WAS THINKING ABOUT ALL OF THE WORK, ALL OF THE EFFORT THAT IT TOOK TO PUT THE MILLIONS AND MILLIONS AND MILLIONS OF LIGHTS THAT WERE DOWN THERE. AND HE WAS THINKING ABOUT THAT. AND THEN AS IT GOT DARK, HE JUST LIFTED HIS GAZE AWAY FROM THE CITY AND LOOKED UP INTO THE HEAVENS, AND THERE WERE MILLIONS AND MILLIONS OF STARS. AND ALL OF A SUDDEN, IT JUST DAWNED ON HIM THAT IN THE SAME WAY EVERY ONE OF THESE LIGHTS DOWN IN THE CITY HAD TO BE PUT THERE BY SOMEONE, THAT THESE LIGHTS IN THE HEAVENS DIDN'T JUST HAPPEN, THAT THERE HAD TO BE A GOD. AND HE WAS ABOUT 11 OR 12, I THINK, AT THE TIME HE WAS TELLING ME ABOUT THIS, AND and THE LORD REMINDED HIM OF IT, AND HE REJECTED THOSE THOUGHTS BECAUSE HIS PARENTS WERE ATHEIST AND SAID THERE WAS NO GOD. BUT HE SAID, ALL OF A SUDDEN, I KNEW. And, AND HE REMEMBERED. AND YOU KNOW WHAT? THIS IS WHAT THIS IS SAYING. REGARDLESS, A PERSON CAN REJECT IT, BUT EVERYBODY KNOWS THAT THERE'S A GOD. YOU KNOW, I'M SURE THAT THERE'S PEOPLE THAT HAVE JUST FLIPPED THE DIALS AND YOU'VE TUNED INTO THIS PROGRAM AND YOU'RE LISTENING TO WHAT I'M SAYING AND YOU'RE SITTING THERE SAYING, I DON'T BELIEVE THAT. IN YOUR HEART, I DON'T CARE WHAT YOU SAY. IN YOUR HEART, YOU KNOW THAT THERE IS A GOD. NOW, you can, YOU CAN, WITH YOUR MIND, GET INTO THESE MIND GAMES AND REJECT IT, BUT AT YOUR HEART LEVEL, YOU KNOW THAT THERE'S A GOD. IF YOU WERE TO DIE, YOU WOULD IMMEDIATELY BE WONDERING ABOUT WHERE AM I GOING? WHAT'S GOING TO HAPPEN? AM I ACCOUNTABLE TO GOD? I THINK THAT THE REASON EVOLUTION IS SO POPULAR TODAY IS BECAUSE IT ALLOWS PEOPLE TO DENY AND DIMINISH THIS INNER WITNESS THAT THERE IS A GOD AND THAT YOU'RE ACCOUNTABLE AND THAT SOMEDAY YOU'RE GOING TO HAVE TO STAND BEFORE GOD. AND SO THEY WANT TO BELIEVE THAT, NO, GOD DIDN'T CREATE US. WE JUST EVOLVED FROM SLIME. AND YOU CAN GET IN AND YOU CAN HAVE SO MANY PEOPLE CONFIRM YOUR OPINION THAT IT DULLS AND DEADENS YOU TO THIS INNER WITNESS. BUT IF YOU GET STILL, IF YOU GET QUIET, THAT LITTLE HOMING DEVICE THAT GOD PUT ON THE INSIDE OF YOU STARTS GOING OFF. 
and starts letting you know that there is a God. Where did I come from? Where am I going? What is life all about? These little thoughts. This is the reason that a lot of people don't like to be still. They have to have the television going. They have to have a radio on. They have to be doing something. This is when they talk about being bored. I'm bored. Man, if you know God, how in the world could you be bored if you are fellowshipping with God and, and, and listening to God and stuff? When people get bored, it's what they're really talking about is that this little homing device, this still small voice that is on the inside of every person, it just begins to start drawing you to God. There is an intuitive knowledge is what these verses are saying. Psalms 46.10 says, Be still and know that I am God. When you get still, when you get quiet, when you quit uh, having all of the noise of this world drowned out this still small voice, if you get quiet and separate yourself, God will go to revealing Himself to you. Be still and know that I am God. God will reveal Himself to you. And I believe that there's people watching this program right now that you have thought, no, there is no God. You've dismissed it. But if you'd be honest, down deep on the inside of you, you know that there has to be a God. You know that things can't just happen randomly. You could take the collective power of the human race, billions of people, all of our money, all of our brightest scientists and people, and did you know what? They can't even create a blade of grass. Now, they can create something that will look like a blade of grass. They could have it the same texture, the same feel. It might fool some people, but if you plant it in the ground, it will not produce more grass. They can't do this. And if mankind with their collective ability and power can't produce the simplest thing in creation, how in the world do you think that people, animals, all of this complex things evolve just randomly. If it can't be done intentionally, what makes you think it can be done randomly? In your heart, you know that's true. You might have believed something else. You might listen to other people and deaden yourself to that voice, but in your heart, you know this stuff's true. And this is what Paul is saying. The reason he's not ashamed of the gospel and he's telling people about the goodness of God, he doesn't have to beat people over the head. At a heart level, people already know that they have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And what the law does, it just amplifies this. It takes this knowledge, this intuitive knowledge that's on the inside of people, and the law amplifies it and makes it so loud and so clear that no person can miss it. And so that's what he's talking about. This is the reason verses 18 through 20 are there. People are without excuse. They understand everything clearly. Clearly, they understand it. They know that they're a sinner. And so you don't have to preach to people about them being a sinner because they already know it. All of these people that are holding these parades and bragging about a lifestyle that is completely contrary to everything that God says, they know it's wrong. That's the reason that they are so adamant and pushing for like homosexual rights and same-sex marriage, and they want this recognition. It's not just because of the physical benefits or anything that it might give them. It's because their own heart is condemning them. And by them having everybody around them embrace them and say, oh no, this is the way that God made you. It's, it's dealing with that inner conscience that they have, that they know that they're wrong. They're trying to soothe their conscience by having everybody else accept them. They're trying to deal with the fact that they know this is unacceptable to God, and they're trying to soothe that by getting everybody else's as acceptance. And you can disagree with that. You're entitled to your opinion, but I'm not going to agree with you or we'd both be wrong. I'm telling you, this is what the Bible says. There is this intuitive knowledge on the inside of every single person. Because of that, you do not have to force people to acknowledge that they are ungodly because they already know it in their heart. You know, I've had people come up who are atheists, and like I said, when the bombs get to flying and the uh, dropping and the bullets are flying, they're all crying out to God. I just learned in Vietnam that when people would say, there is no God, I'd just ignore them. And I'd say, I know that you know that there's a God. And I'd go to talking to them, and I said, in your heart, you know, and I'd just treat them as if the Bible is true. 
THERE'S PEOPLE THAT GET INTO THESE MIND GAMES AND THEY, they FOOL THEMSELVES. AND THEY MAY FOOL SOME PEOPLE, BUT THEY AREN'T GOING TO FOOL ANYBODY WHO BELIEVES THE WORD OF GOD. THE WORD OF GOD SAYS IN THEIR HEART THEY KNOW THAT THEY ARE A SINNER. GOD HAS REVEALED HIMSELF AGAINST ALL UNGODLINESS AND ALL UNRIGHTEOUSNESS OF MAN. IT IS CLEARLY SEEN. THEY ARE WITHOUT EXCUSE. YOU DO NOT HAVE TO ARGUE WITH PEOPLE ABOUT THEIR SIN. MAN, THAT'S POWERFUL RIGHT THERE. AND THEN IN THE 21ST VERSE, BECAUSE THAT WHEN THEY KNEW GOD, THEY GLORIFIED HIM NOT AS GOD, NEITHER WERE THANKFUL, BUT BECAME VAIN IN THEIR IMAGINATIONS, AND THEIR FOOLISH HEART WAS DARKENED. RIGHT HERE, HE SHOWS THAT ALTHOUGH THERE IS THIS INTUITIVE KNOWLEDGE ON THE INSIDE OF EVERY PERSON, YOU CAN DEADEN YOURSELF TO IT. YOU CAN BECOME WHAT THE BIBLE DOWN HERE CALLS REPROBATE. AND I'M NOT GOING TO HAVE TIME ON TODAY'S PROGRAM TO FULLY EXPLAIN THIS, BUT I'LL GET INTO THIS TOMORROW. BUT YOU CAN DIMINISH THIS INNER WITNESS. AND I BELIEVE THAT A LOT OF PEOPLE ARE AT THIS STATE. AND RIGHT HERE IN THE 21ST VERSE, IT GIVES YOU FOUR THINGS THAT YOU HAVE TO DO TO DEADEN YOURSELF TO THIS INNER WITNESS THAT THERE IS A GOD AND THAT WHAT YOU'VE DONE IS WRONG AND THAT YOU NEED A SAVIOR. HERE'S THE FOUR THINGS. THE FIRST THING IS THEY DON'T GLORIFY HIM AS GOD. THE SECOND THING, THEY ARE NOT THANKFUL. YOU KNOW, THANKFULNESS INCLUDES A LOT OF THINGS. It, IT'S MEMORY, BUT IT MEANS THAT YOU HAVE TO ACKNOWLEDGE THAT YOU ARE NOT THE SOURCE, THAT YOU WERE GIVEN THINGS. YOUR LIFE CAME FROM GOD. YOUR WISDOM, YOUR ABILITY, YOUR TALENTS CAME FROM GOD. THANKFULNESS MAKES YOU RECOGNIZE THAT THERE IS A GOD. AND SO THEY WEREN'T THANKFUL. THEY THOUGHT EVERYTHING THAT HAPPENED, THAT THEY DID IT BY THEIR OWN ABILITY INSTEAD OF RECOGNIZING GOD'S THE ONE THAT GAVE THEM THIS ABILITY. AND THEY BECAME VAIN IN THEIR IMAGINATIONS, AND THEIR FOOLISH HEART WAS DARKENED. YOU KNOW, I'VE GOT A TEACHING ON THIS ENTITLED, THE FOUR KEYS TO STAYING FULL OF GOD. I THINK THAT'S THE TITLE. I'VE HAD MULTIPLE TITLES TO THIS, BUT IT'S BASED ON THIS VERSE, AND IT'S ACTUALLY A FIVE-PART TEACHING THAT GOES THROUGH THESE FOUR THINGS. AND IF YOU HAVE TO DO THESE FOUR THINGS TO DEADEN YOURSELF TOWARDS THIS INNER WITNESS OF GOD, WELL, THEN, IF YOU WOULD DO THE OPPOSITE OF THOSE THINGS, INSTEAD OF NOT GLORIFYING GOD, IF YOU WOULD GIVE ALL THE GLORY TO GOD, IF YOU WOULD BECOME THANKFUL, IF YOU WOULD USE YOUR IMAGINATION IN A POSITIVE WAY AND MAKE YOUR HEART SENSITIVE TO GOD, THEN YOU CAN GUARANTEE THAT YOU WILL NEVER BECOME REPROBATE, THAT YOU WILL NEVER BECOME DEADENED TO THE THINGS OF GOD. IT IS ONE OF MY FAVORITE THINGS TO TEACH. IT IS A POWERFUL, POWERFUL TEACHING. I MIGHT EVEN TEACH ON THAT AFTER I GET THROUGH WITH THIS SERIES BECAUSE IT FITS. BUT, MAN, IT'S POWERFUL. YOU COULD GET THAT. Uh, I'M SURE THAT YOU COULD CALL IN AND GET THAT INFORMATION. BUT THIS IS, AGAIN, JUST PLAYING OFF OF THE FACT THAT GOD, uh, THAT PAUL SAID THAT HE'S NOT ASHAMED OF TELLING PEOPLE ABOUT THE GOODNESS OF GOD BECAUSE THEY ALREADY KNOW THAT THEY'RE SINNERS. THEY ALREADY HAVE THIS INTUITIVE WITNESS. EVERY SINGLE PERSON KNOWS IT. AND SO, THEREFORE, HE'S JUST TELLING PEOPLE ABOUT THE GOODNESS OF GOD. AND IF PEOPLE REJECT THIS INNER WITNESS, THEY CAN BECOME REPROBATE. WE WILL DEAL WITH THAT ON OUR PROGRAM TOMORROW. BUT LET ME MENTION ONCE AGAIN THAT I'VE GOT THIS BOOK ENTITLED GRACE, THE POWER OF THE GOSPEL. I'VE GOT IT ON CD. I'VE ALSO GOT DVDs. AND THEN I'VE GOT THIS STUDY GUIDE. LISTEN AS OUR ANNOUNCER GIVES YOU THIS INFORMATION AND PLEASE CALL OR WRITE TODAY. THE GRACE MESSAGE, um, WHEN I HEARD IT, I KNEW THAT THIS WAS THE TRUTH and my spirit knew that this was the truth. Gain a greater understanding of what Jesus did for you through God's grace when you get Andrew's teaching on Romans titled, Grace, the Power of the Gospel. It's available in either a CD or a DVD album made from our daily television broadcast. You can also get this teaching as a book or a companion study guide available in either English or Spanish. Each of these valuable resources are available for a gift of any amount. I really recommend that you get this teaching on the grace of God as taught through the Apostle Paul's teaching from the book of Romans. This is powerful. And this book is entitled Grace, the Power of the Gospel. I tell you, if this doesn't light your fire, your wood is wet. THIS WILL JUST BE A BLESSING TO YOU. I ALSO NOT ONLY HAVE THE BOOK, BUT I HAVE THIS STUDY GUIDE THAT IS DESIGNED TO HELP YOU TEACH OTHER PEOPLE. ONCE YOU UNDERSTAND THE TRUE GOSPEL OF THE LORD, YOU ARE GOING TO WANT TO SHARE THIS WITH SOMEBODY ELSE. AND THEN WE ALSO HAVE CD'S WHERE I TAUGHT THIS AND THEN DVD'S THAT WERE TAKEN FROM MY TELEVISION PROGRAM. 
I tell you, this would really help you. You don't get this in just one time listening to it. You need to go over and over it, and plus you need to share this with other people. Go to awmi.net to see all the ways you can get this teaching. If you'd like a verse-by-verse commentary on Romans, consider Andrew's Life for Today's Study Bible and Commentary, Romans Edition. It includes 470 footnotes that will help you understand God's unconditional love and grace. Or if you prefer, all of these resources are available as part of the Romans Collection. It includes your choice of either the CD or DVD album, the book, the study guide, and the Life for Today Study Bible and Commentary, Romans Edition. Order the collection today, and while supplies last, you'll also receive a special Andrew Womack Ministries inscribed mug from our store. The Romans Collection has a catalog value of $124, but you can receive it today for just $75. The first audio teaching in today's series is available for a gift of any amount when you write or call. We encourage everyone to give, but if you're simply unable to afford it, Andrew and his partners will provide this first CD free of charge. You can order resources or become a Grace Partner through our website at awmi.net. While there, you can discover more product details and download many free resources. Or call our helpline Monday through Friday from 4.30 a.m. to 9.30 p.m. Mountain Time. Our helpline number is 719-635-1111. To write us, use the address on your screen. We appreciate your generosity and hope to hear from you today. Our lives were turned right side up when we came to an Andrew Womack event back in 2006. Our daughter Hannah was just given two weeks to live, but at that conference she was prayed for and praise God she was miraculously healed and she's 100% well to this day. Since Hannah was healed, we found that there have been many people that have been healed at Andrew's events. It's not a question of will he heal you, he's already healed you. Andrew just gives it to you like it is. And every time I leave one of these conferences, I am changed for the better. You feel like you're with family and there's no strangers and everyone is so happy and joyful. I am enjoying this conference so much, I literally cannot wipe the smile off my face. When you attend a Gospel Truth Conference, you're going to be inspired by powerful praise and worship with Charlie and Jill LeBlanc and Andrew teaching the life-changing Word of God. There are prayer ministers there as well. Attending a Gospel Truth Conference is so easy and it's free. Go to awmi.net for more information. And while you're there, you can register for the event. This March, go on a journey with God, God with us. An internationally toured musical will take you on an adventure through a stunning display of stage and screen. Watch the Bible come to life as it's retold by the Apostle Peter to persecuted Christians in Rome. Showing at Caris Bible College from March 23rd to the 25th. Tickets are available now. For times and dates, go to GodWithUsMusical.com.